Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. I'm Billy Epperhart, and on this show, you're going to hear from industry leaders in business, real estate, and investing. Our Wealth Builder coaches and myself are excited to teach you how to make sense of making money for making a difference. Okay, let's get started. Hello, welcome to this week's Wealth Builders Podcast. I'm Karen Conrad, and I am so grateful that you joined us today. We're really excited about the times that we live in, and I know that might sound strange because there's so many things that seem to not be right. But when we look at where the world is today, boy, more than ever, we know that God has called us to be in business, to be in real estate you know, to be uh, raising kids, whatever that might be for such a time as this. Sometimes when I feel a little challenged with what's going on, I read the news and feel discouraged. I remind myself, and I'm going to remind you that of all the times that God has called us into this world, he chose us to live in this time. So that in itself shows the confidence that God has in us because this is such a critical time in history. And if you're listening to this podcast, you are hearing that sound in the spirit that Billy talks about uh, for those of us that are called to build wealth for purposes of the kingdom. And one of the significant ways that we grow wealth is through business. And that's why we've got the upcoming business and nonprofit workshop from August 18th through the 20th in Denver, Colorado, Uh, It's really one of my favorite events that we do. It's just so full of great information. And when we tie in the business, the for-profit and nonprofit, a lot of people that are in the Wealth Builders family like you are, you do have your businesses, we do real estate, but we also have nonprofits or a heart for ministry. And so we bring those two things together and uh, it's just going to be an amazing event. So I want to remind you that there's a handful of tickets left in person and we've got a code for you. It's WB200. You can register for either the in-person or the live stream and get $200 off. So if you've not yet registered, go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events, and you can use the WB200 code to get in for the the live stream. Actually, after that is just $99. All right, well, let's get started on today's topic. I always like to look for things where I say, wow, if, if I can't do 10 things, What's one thing that I can do that I feel like is going to make a significant difference? And that topic is us aligning our uh, pursuit of prosperity and wealth building to our God-given purpose. Billy says something like this. He says that prosperity without purpose is dangerous. And uh, that really ties into the scripture that says in Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and, and he adds no sorrow with it. And so I, I've thought over the years, like, well, how do you do that? How do you make sure that that you build wealth and uh, it doesn't bring sorrow with it? Well, there's probably a lot of different answers for that, but I think a key is tying our wealth building to our purpose. And understanding purpose is key to our sustained personal and business success. Listen to this. A person of character operating in their God-given purpose will achieve their full potential. Let me say that again. Maybe you want to write this down. A person of character operating in their God-given purpose will achieve their full potential. There is this picture you've maybe seen, and I'm going to describe it to you, of it's um, like an iceberg. And you see the very tip of it that is standing above the water. But the most of that iceberg goes down deep into the water. And we've got an analogy here with that. And it's, if you think about the bottom of that iceberg, um, we've got beliefs, which I'll explain to you. Then if you go up a little bit towards the surface, you've got values. And then just underneath the surface, sometimes it goes above the surface, is thoughts and feelings. And then the little slice of the iceberg that's at the top 
is the behavior. And when we are leading people, um, even with raising our kids, uh, when we see what's happening in the world around us, what we see with our physical eyes in here, with our physical ears, is generally in that very top part of behavior. So if we want to change behavior, while we can talk about, you know, with our, our employees, like, you know, you're doing this, you should be doing this. But if we really want to have an impact and we want to get to the bottom of even our success, we want to go all the way to the bottom of that iceberg layer in beliefs because everything springboards from there. So when we look at beliefs, that's where it starts that leads to behavior. It includes identity, purpose, and passion. And all of those, when they are rooted and grounded in God, that impacts our values. Our values impact our thoughts and feelings. And as we align our thoughts and feelings up with the word of God, then our behavior is going to reflect our God-designed behavior. But the core starts with identity, purpose, and passion. So I'm going to focus on purpose today and encourage you with a couple things that I think will really help you to dig into this topic a bit, but also to maybe realign what you're doing, or if you're starting a business or a nonprofit, to make sure from the beginning that you are aligning with God's purpose for your business, your real estate, whatever your endeavor is. So Proverbs 19.21 says this in the CEB version, many plans are in a person's mind, but the Lord's purpose will succeed. Not might succeed, will succeed. So I look at the Bible sometimes as, of course, a map, a guide, but sort of like a blueprint. And if I was to look at, Lord, what can I do? Where should I start in the foundation to create a blueprint for success? It starts with God's purpose for our life. And in that, we can have the confidence that we don't have to do everything perfect. But if we are having an effort, if we are doing everything we can or just in tune with God and trusting that we're hearing from him because we're in relationship we can know that success is imminent. So meaning if we're in an endeavor, like right now we're doing, oh uh, gosh, in uh, in businesses and in real estate, we're, we've got a lot of things that we're working on, both in Wealth Builders and, and all of us personally. And when you hit that challenge, that seems to be difficult. When you know in your heart that you are aligned with God's purpose and we know that success is ahead, It actually helps you to stay with it or to think through logically without emotions going all over the place to work through those challenges. I like to look at secular secular studies and just see how the secular world stumbles upon God's principles. You know, if we look at people that are successful, generally, if you dig in deep, you're able to see that that success, whether they know it or not, lines up with a biblical principle. So this is an article that is in Deloitte, which is a multi, I'm sure billion dollar, at least multi-million dollar company. They're all over the world. And in 2021, they came out with their study and it was giving the number one insight for business success. This is from the Global Marketing Trends 2021. And what was the number one insight? And this was from a secular company, purpose. They stated it like this, the foundation required to flourish in even the most turbulent of times. Isn't that amazing? That sounds a lot like the word, doesn't it? When we stay close to God, we're not tossed to and fro. And they are seeing that for a business, to flourish, even in the most turbulent times, they need to be focused on purpose. Here's another quote. They said, purpose-driven companies inherently understand why they exist and who they are best built to serve regardless of what they sell today. 
That is encouraging to me. We know this, but this is a study of businesses and they found the key to success in businesses goes right back to purpose. And in that, why do we exist? That sounds a lot like our vision statements that we teach at Wealth Builders, our value proposition, and who are they best built to serve regardless of where they're at today? That sounds like our customer segments and tying back to discovering that through the business model canvas. And that's one of the things we will definitely be teaching on at the business workshop. And we've got that included in our business coaching. Um, We've got a series, it's a year coaching. We've got a series of things that we take organizations through, including this and the business model canvas. And when you get that right, the why, and you understand who you're best, best built to serve, And your value proposition, meaning your differentiator, when you bring that together, we have seen companies just transform in a very short period of time. So here are three keys to your personal and business success that are related to purpose. Uh, The first one is just to remember that God uniquely created you on purpose for success. Number two, God sees you and is intentionally interacting with you. I think one of the challenges we all have is we we want to please God. Uh, We have to remember God's already pleased with us. But we want to serve God through our businesses. And we can at times make it overcomplicated. What I mean by that is we might think, oh my gosh, I have to hear a voice, you know, an audible voice to help give me direction. Or maybe we sense that we want to go a certain direction, but we just don't feel confident it's God. You know, that's part of how the enemy gets us off. Meaning if we can question that we hear God's voice, we're going to be timid and we're not going to step forward into anything with confidence. But let me just encourage you that if you have a heart to um, relate to God, if you are in relationship with God, you can trust that your desires and the things that you think are from God. We've got a measurement with the word of God that, you know, if we get this idea that we want to go rob a bank or something, we know that that's not from God. But if we are in relationship We can go forward in confidence because we've got the nature of God. I was just on a Zoom call actually right before recording this podcast, and we were talking about this, that when we are in relationship with God, we don't need to be consumed with being afraid of making mistakes. God can steer a moving ship. And I really like that because if I don't know what to do, But I have a sense like, I'm just going to go this direction. At least I'm moving, right? And then God can redirect me uh, if he needs to. So I just want to encourage you with that. And then also a heart-to-heart connection with God positions you to accomplish goals and to uh, to sustain success, which is all of our goal. So going back to purpose, purpose is God's display to the world of his workmanship. Our purpose comes from that relationship with God and out of that we glorify him and we're destined to succeed. The gifts and talents that you have are God's and he placed them in you to help you fulfill the purpose that he has for your life. I've got a great story on this. I was visiting with Steve Brown actually yesterday, and he is just an amazing um, marketer, AV person. He works with some of the largest ministries in the world, as well as things like the NFL does the audiovisual. And so I was just visiting with him because I wanted to learn, but also I wanted to know his story. Like, how did you end up where you're at? And he was sharing with me, that uh, his wife was a singer and uh, they were they were at an event. It was a fairly large event and the AV person got sick and Steve was there supporting his wife. And so the AV person said, hey, have you been watching this long enough to be able to take over the AV? I've got to get to my room and, 
and I'm, I'm sick. And so Stephen's like, oh my gosh, well, okay, you know, what are you going to do? So he started to take over the AV and he was doing something completely different in his job. And through that, he discovered this amazing talent that God, gifts and talents that God put in him for AV in production. And I just thought that was so cool because here he was, you know, supporting his wife and he ended up in this situation where somebody needed help. He just called on him with something he had no training in. But yet in that process, because he was willing to say, sure, I'll jump into it and help, God was able to steer that moving ship. And in that was really discovering um, the one of the businesses that God had in mind for him all his life. Isn't that cool? So sometimes we might be doing something completely not related, or maybe we're in our business and it feels like, oh my goodness, this is just not working. I want to give up. But if we take a moment to just tune in to, Lord, what is your purpose in this? You know, there. If, if I'm not thriving, there must need to be an adjustment, right? What is that? And oftentimes we're doing the right thing or we're in maybe the right business, but we are approaching it in a way that is outside of really the way that God designed us. And we just maybe need an adjustment. I've had times in my life where I've worked for organizations and, and I absolutely loved my job. And I remember in banking one time, but then all at once, you know, one day I was like, wow, I don't like my job anymore. And I was perplexed by that because I thought, wait a minute, you know, a month ago, I loved coming to work and I loved what I do. And now today I'm feeling completely dissatisfied. I'm thinking about looking for a different job. Um, I don't feel like I'm contributing Yet in the natural, if I looked around, everything was going smooth. Well, here's what I discovered in that process. I had no idea about finding God's purpose and working through that purpose. But when I analyzed it several years later, and I was like, what was happening there? I realized that I had built a several departments, actually, um, that were a kind of a mess, right? They needed to have help with culture We needed to pull, and this was in my banking days, we needed to pull 27 branches together. We had to create an operational foundation, a sales foundation. And in the thick of that, I was working a lot of hours. You would think on the outside looking in, like that's when I should have been dissatisfied. But once I got everything in order and it was going smoothly, that's actually when I got dissatisfied. And so my leaders at that organization were really good. And I don't know if they knew what they were doing or not, but they must have recognized something that I needed another challenge. So they gave me the insurance division and uh, they added workload to me and I had to go in and do the same process with the insurance division. Guess what happened? I was popping out of bed. I couldn't wait to get to work, even though I had just been handed another big assignment with little or no increase in pay. All at once, I came alive again. So as I was going through this process and I look back on that, it was like the Lord was revealing to me that the purpose, the gifts and talents that he's given me really help bring organizations, their vision to reality. Um, But when I had everything in order and I didn't really have a next step or I didn't have the ability to, you know, move into another area and just create something in the organizational structure, I was no longer in, in engaging my gifts and talents because I had brought that department from vision to reality. So when I got assigned the new insurance challenge, that division, I could look and bring the vision for the insurance division to reality. Okay, so my question for you is, is how are you designed? What has God called you to? It's not a job. It's not a position. But there's something in you that he's called you to that aligns with your destiny. And in that, you'll discover your gifts. You'll discover your talents 
And when we cooperate with God, he will place us in positions to utilize those gifts and talents for purposes of not only our personal destiny, but for purposes of the kingdom. God wants his gifts and talents to be honored. True satisfaction and success flow from understanding and walking out your purpose with him. So another story many of you heard, but I'm just going to recap it real quickly for those of you that haven't heard this. You know, when we have gifts and talents or we have things that are easy for us, it's easy to go through life and not recognize, first of all, that they're God-given talents, maybe not recognize that they're aligned to our purpose, but also to take them for granted in a way. So I used to get really frustrated with people that couldn't understand or see things that I was seeing, and particularly in business. If there's a problem to be solved, I could see how to solve that problem, but people around me weren't so quick to catch on. They were confused. They couldn't catch up to it. And I would get frustrated. And the Lord showed me as I was just coming away from a meeting that I was, I was felt like I wasn't being heard, um, you know, kind of, I don't know, just feeling like maybe I wasn't being honored. I think we've all been there. The Lord gave me this aha moment when I quieted down and could actually hear his voice. And when I say this on the inside, it kind of sounds like my voice, but it was the Lord talking to me. And he said this line that I just shared with you. Um, he just said, uh, you know, your gifts and talents are from me and I'm more concerned about my gifts and talents being honored than you need to be. So it was a reminder that there's gifts and talents in me that I wasn't recognizing, really even appreciating, okay? But it was also a reminder that those are gifts from God. And those are things that he wants to be honored because they're tied to his purpose for our life and the overall pi uh, picture of purposes for the kingdom, okay? And that I didn't need to fight for my gifts and talents to be heard or appreciated he was concerned about that. So as I just trust in him, he will move me into positions that utilize the gifts and talents for his purposes. And in that comes honor. And so I would encourage you that if you are in that period, or maybe you even see an employee that's kind of going down a path of frustration, or maybe they're not quite as happy in their job, they're not feeling honored for whatever reason, dig into this a bit, or maybe you're not seeing the results in your business, or maybe your real estate is, has been particularly challenging. Go back and ask, wow, why God have you called me into this? And is there some something that I'm not honoring or utilizing that you've placed in me to accomplish this? Or have I started to maybe pursue maybe money or something else ahead of your purposes? And it can be just that eighth inch of alignment that Billy talks about when he was on the mound pitching. Um, it might not be a major shift. It just might be a little one. But if you ask that question and you get aligned with the purpose for what you're endeavoring, and then you set your systems up, you yourself personally work through that purpose. Remember that scripture that I shared with you on the front end that, that we have success. We don't have to go out and try to get it. Success has already been provided and then we just cooperate along the way. We invite God into that adventure with uh, what we're pursuing and help shape that success. So I'm going to leave you with this statement today. God has created you with an incredible personal and unique purpose. Your God-given purpose is designed to align heaven and earth in your area of influence, expanding the kingdom of God, which brings transformation. Isn't that encouraging? Your God-given purpose is designed to align heaven and earth in your area of influence. And when we pursue that with God, 
God, we are bringing transformation to all of those around us. So I want to remind you again that we've got the business and nonprofit workshop at Wealth Builders coming up August 18th through the 20th. So if you've not registered, I encourage you to do so. Use that code WB200 and go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events. And also, I want to invite you to check out the Wealth Builders website. We have got thousands of blogs there that are available to help you grow in your wealth building journey. So you can go to wealthbuilders.org and just simply type in um, a topic that you're interested in in the search button. And then from that, we will have multiple blogs that come under that topic that you can learn from, share with others. It's just a lot of great content. So thank you again for being part of the Wealth Builders family. We love and appreciate Appreciate you and make it a great rest of the day. God bless. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Builders Podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review the show. If you want to learn more about who we are, visit our website at wealthbuilders.org and check us out on Facebook. We'll see you next time.